In this section, we will discuss the scope of ISO 262262 2018 release. Understanding the scope is crucial as it helps us identify where the standards are applicable. Equally, important is to recognize where the standards do not apply. All passenger and commercial vehicles should follow this standard and all e and &E systems and their interacting systems are also included in ISO 26262. Special vehicles for drivers with disabilities have been excluded from the standard and hazards which are not directly caused by E&D &E systems are also excluded. ISO 26262 follows a risk-based approach when dealing with safety critical functionalities, hazards and identified for each potential system failure. Let's take the example of airbag which is a safety critical system and its functionality is to deploy in case of a crash. This system has a malfunction of crash sensor error or CAN failure leading to a hazard of airbag not deployed or airbag not activated when required. The determination of whether these hazards can lead to accidents or not depends on specific situations in which the failure occurs which is termed as operation situations represented with exposure with letter E. Based on the situation, the controllability of the driver will be determined and finally the severity. Each hazard is assigned to a safety integrity level SIL, based on a risk graph. In the context of automotive functionalities, these SIL levels are referred to as automotive safety integrity levels called a SIL. A SIL is categorized into four levels. A, B, C and D. Hazards that do not fall within these categories are classified as quality management QM. To determine the AC levels, three parameters are considered exposure E, severity S and controllability C. The exposure parameter is determined by evaluating the frequency or relative duration of each situation. The S parameter, which is severity, is assessed by rating the potential injuries resulting from accidents. The C parameter, which is controllability, is determined by examining the chances of the driver or individuals being able to prevent the occurrence of an accident. Within the ACL risk graph, ACL A represents the lowest level of safety requirement, while ACL D represents the highest level. ISO 26262 outlines guidelines that must be followed by all stakeholders involved, including OEMs, Tier 1s and suppliers. The ISO 26262 2018 standard is divided into 12 parts, each serving a specific purpose. Part 1 provides definitions for various terminologies used in functional safety workflow. Part 2 focuses on managing functional safety projects clarifying the roles and responsibilities of project managers, safety managers, safety teams and others. Part 3, 4, 5 and 6 discuss performing safety analysis at different levels ranging from system level to hardware level. Part 7 provides guidelines addressing issues that may arise during production, decommissioning and post-production servicing of safety related elements. Part 8 covers supporting activities required during each phase of safety life cycle. Part 9 offers guidance on performing qualitative and quantitative analysis, criteria for ACL decomposition and conducting dependent failure analysis. Part 10 details how functional safety analysis should be conducted for safety elements out of context called SEOC components. Part 11 focuses on functional safety analysis for semiconductor components. Finally, Part 12 provides guidelines for performing functional safety analysis specifically for motorcycles. In this section, we will learn how to interpret the ISO 26262 guidelines. By default, unless otherwise specified, every statement applies to all ACLs as indicated in the red box. Comments or explanations, if any, will be provided in the form of notes indicated by the yellow box. If the requirements are determined based on ACIL, they will be presented in a table highlighted in the blue box. In this section, the notation O denotes no recommendations, 
plus denotes recommended and two plus signs denotes highly recommended. 